Hello everyone, and welcome to our program, Local Collections at the Oakville Public Library. My name is Elise Cole, and I'm the Local Collections Librarian at the Central Branch. I thought to start, I would give you a virtual tour of the Oakville Room, which is where the physical locations are housed for the um, local collections. And then what I'll do is I'll demonstrate the related virtual resources so that you have a better of idea of what you what you have available to you uh, as a local and or family historian. So as you may realize, access to the physical collection of the Oakville Room is currently unavailable because of provincial shutdown, but there are some workarounds that I can offer in a few instances that I'll also try to highlight as we go along and towards the end of my presentation. So within the Oakville Room, there are three distinct collections. Uh, the Oakville Collection, which offers both reference that can be consulted in person, as well as circulating or items that you can check out, where we even have uh, multiple copies of those items or copies that are, live at other branch locations. Next, we have the Genealogy Collection, made up again of both reference and circulating, and a variety of formats in both of these cases. Finally, we have the Urban Municipal Collection, which is made up of documents created by local government and organizations. Some of these you may find will overlap with the other collections in the room. For example, some heritage reports that started out potentially in the Urban Municipal Collection when they were current, eventually then got moved to the Oakville Collection. And the same thing happens with some of the genealogical resources that are specific to Oakville, Trafalgar, and Halton. And because that is um, an important thing, thing to understand about what we collect within the Oakville Room and local collections, I think it's um, important to be all on the same page, excuse the pun, um, or at least have the same understanding of what the historical boundaries are that are involved. So here we're looking at a map of a section of Halton County. Um, it is made up of four townships. Halton County as a whole is made up of four townships. They are Nelson, Esqueezing, Nassasaguaya, and Trafalgar townships. And here we're predominantly looking at uh, Trafalgar township, as you can see with the red line that actually encompasses all the way up to Steeles Avenue from Winston Churchill across and then jog trots a little bit and goes down uh, Tremaine Road, which is now Burlow Drive down in Oakville area and along the waterfront. In 1963, 62, sorry, the three municipalities, so um, that would be the village of Brawny, which is here, this little blue square, the original town of Oakville, as well as Trafalgar Township as municipality itself. It had its own reeve and councillors. Amalgamated in 1962, and of course the entire town stretched being across the boundaries that Trafalgar Township originally occupied. And Trafalgar Township does still exist as a geographic entity, just no longer really as a political entity. So in 1974, when the region of Halton was established, they then changed the boundaries or the northern boundary of the town of Oakville to this area here, which is now all marked in yellow. So really the northern boundary for it is pretty much um, the 407 lower baseline area. So this the Oakville room is located directly behind the customer service desk on the third or top floor of the central branch at 120 Navy Street. It was built in 1992, courtesy of a donation to the library from the Lawson Foundation, which is why you find a painting of the Honorable Ray Lawson, 17th Lieutenant Governor General, or Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, and founder of the foundation. While there is still some computer access available by appointment during the current shutdown, the ScanPro Family Search Affiliate Library computer seen here is not available at this time as the room is currently blocked from use. Let me now go through what else is in this photo. So here on the left, you find our county outlet atlas collection. 
And on the desk, the most current copies of the agenda packages from the town and regions councils and committees. Above the atlases is our certificate of designation as a family search affiliate library. And to the right, these red books over here are actually the crisscross directories that include Oakville starting with 1891. They continue in the cabinets further to the right that I'll show you shortly. The locked cabinet to the left of the desk, so over here, the other left, is where the His Oakville Historical Society's copies of the area land records on microfilm are currently housed. Because the Oakville Historical Society does not have their own skin, um, microfilm scanner, um, they actually have it as deposited uh, with us for access purposes. Um, and if you do ever request any microfilm on interlibrary loan from other institutions like the Archives of Ontario, um, in instances where interloan is more open um, at, than it is at present, this is the cupboard where they will be stored and staff will retrieve them for you when you come in to use them. But two of the gems that you may not know about are actually further to the right of the desk in this cabinet here, as well as in the microform cabinet just to the right of it. So in the cabinet just to the left of the desk is where you'll find our 1800 to 1900 name card index. And so this is just a one example of one of the cards that you will see in alphabetical order listed. This card collection was created and isn't in our catalog um, back in the 1980s in an effort to make up for the lack of newspaper coverage from the 1800 to early 1900 period. Unlike a lot of area newspapers, there was a lot of changes, mergers, and newspapers that became rather defunct um, as things went along. And so their copies didn't necessarily survive long enough for them to be collected, microfilmed, or otherwise retained. So in order to find out more about people of Oakville, one of the projects that was undertaken was to create this name index where you'll see the cards in alphabetical order include the information about the individual, any other pertinent details that could be ascertained from the resources where they were being collected from. So here we see Mary Kieran Nee Rogers, that's her maiden name, who was married to Henry C. Kieran, and they had two children, two daughters. And if we take a look at the back of the card, this information is actually taken from what are town records, and they are birth registrations from 1885 and 1881. I'm assuming that's when the girls were born and those births were actually registered with the town of Oakville. And the reason I know that the BR means birth records is courtesy of this abbreviations card that is found at the beginning of each of the boxes in the cabinet that go on to explain what those uh, abbreviations mean, including any time something happened to be found from a newspaper anything that was found from um, a resource uh, such as Hazel Chisholm Matthews Oakville in the 16, which is a seminal book on the history of Oakville, as well as other resources or abbreviations that people might not necessarily recognize. So further to the left, or sorry, the other left, my right, um, is the second gem, which is our microform collection, which is cataloged, but not digitized. So in case you're wondering why I'm using the term microform, it actually encompasses both terms, microfilm, which is the real, and microfiche, which are flat. So altogether, they are microforms. You see the metal cabinet to the left in this photo, and it contains our newspapers on microform, the town records like the birth records we just saw referenced in the main index cards, as well as microfilm of everything from Tweedsmere histories from a couple of the local federate, federated women's institutes of Ontario, uh, just to name a few. We can certainly take a look at these when we talk more about the library's catalog when we look at that live. On top of this microform cabinet, we actually find a number of binders with issues of 
the newsletters of local historical societies along with the publication produced by the Halton Peel branch of Ontario Ancestors. In this photo, we also see the locked cabinets for the reference items in the Oakville collection. And as I mentioned before, the lower cabinets here contain the continuation of the crisscross directories up until they ceased publication in 2001 along with some of the back issues of the Oakville Beaver before they head to storage. We can also see here, because this photo was taken a bit uh, ago, uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, that the map collection is located here as well. They have now been moved out of the room as they're very difficult to quarantine when they are allowed to be used. And on the shelves directly below, two below, you can see some back issues of some of the local history and genealogy magazines and journals like Internet Genealogy and Ontario History, the Journal of the Ontario Historical Society. It's important to note that you can find maps listed in our catalog with more to come as they are in the process of actually being added to the catalog as records. So to the right of the map cabinet, we see the continuation of the locked glass door cabinets with the remainder of the Oakville collection reference items. So these contain, um, these glass door cabinets contain the Oakville collection items that aren't easy or that we actually want to keep at least one copy available for reference, even if other copies are checked out, or in other cases where they're the only copies of information that we have and now, and they're not ones that can necessarily be easily replaced. At the bottom here are um, locked cabinets again, which is where we locate and house our archival collection in these cabinets below. Again, we'll take a look at some of these items when we look at the online catalog. So if you're, ever, if you're wondering what's actually in there, Please remind me as we get to the demonstrations where I go live onto the catalog and we'll take a look at those. So this is our north wall of the room. So behind this is actually our uh, self-serve printer, photocopier, um, scan to email, as well as our reference area, um, as well as our team books, if I remember correctly. Um, it's been a little while since I've been in the branch, so it's hard to remember what's where. Um, on this wall of three collections, we have from left to right our circulating Oakville collection items, which you are welcome to place on hold and pick up uh, through contactless uh, pickup at your favorite branch. And certainly when the branches are open, once everything is back to normal operations, um, the same holds true, you can still place holds and have items brought into your local location so that you don't have to travel down to the central branch if it doesn't require you referencing it in person. In the center is our genealogy collection, uh, which is actually a mix of circulating and reference items and cover a number of different topics of family history research. Everything from how to do research on uh, photographers indexes to passenger lists to how to do Canadian genealogical research versus how to do Scottish genealogical research and sort of everything in between that we can get our hands on. The very last set of shelves here on the right and before you get to the dictionary stand is the urban municipal collection. And these are the documents that I mentioned before like uh, the town bylaws, Halton region reports, uh, library, um, Oakville Public Library Board agenda packages, which I actually see up here, um, as well as things from other organizations like Community Development Halton, which does a lot of research on um, the state of Halton region as a whole. And last but not least, we have our yearbook cabinet. Uh, we have a fair collection of yearbooks, though we always do welcome additions and donations of yearbooks from local schools to our collection, if you like. Um, if you happen to be from a school that 
um, is no longer in existence. Um, it might be the kind of thing that for reunion purposes and the like, you might want to come in and take a look at them. Um, if you ever are planning um, those kinds of get togethers or that kind of thing. But, um, and also we have a fair collection of Appleby College yearbooks as well, going back to their um, inception. So before I move on to some of those digital options, let me circle back to some of the workarounds that I mentioned earlier. Of course, placing a hold on an item that can be checked out is one of those options that you have in order to learn more about Oakville's history. Perhaps you want to take a look at more information about some of Oakville's buildings, that kind of thing. You can check our catalog and if there's a book that seems to be of interest to you, certainly place it on hold and we'll make sure that it's made available to you through library takeout. In the case of something more local and that you would normally come and look at yourself, like the name index cards, if there's a particular family name that you're looking for or a particular individual that you're wondering about who um, you're hoping to find more information about that person uh, who was living in Oakville between 1800 and 1900, I can certainly make arrangements for that to be looked up and copies emailed to you. I'll go into a few others as we look at the resources available online. So just to give you um, a quick sense of where we're going next, first off, we're going to take a look at our catalog because it's a great place to check to see what we owned. And we do have links to resources that only exist online that might be pertinent to your research. But if you're looking for something related to local and family history, I really strongly recommend that you use the advanced search instead of the basic search, and I'll demonstrate why when we go into the live demos. We're also going to be looking at a few of our databases related to local collections. There are images, newspapers, as well as other resources that you might not be familiar with. One is Halton's Historical Records. Newspapers should actually be taken out of that, but the name hasn't been changed in quite some time, so um, it still exists as this title. Next, we have the Oakville Beaver and other Oakville newspapers. So any of the newspapers that preceded the Oakville Beaver in its current form are actually owned technically by the Oakville Beaver and they give us permission to actually digitize and index them to make them available online. And we'll take a look at that a bit more closely in just a little bit. But one of our crowning jewels, I think, is Oakville Images. It's a database that's been in the works and made available um, quite a number of years ago. And it's actually a collaboration between and amongst a number of different groups that I think you might find helpful to see what Oakville may have looked like in the past, as well as to do research on people, places, and events. So just to show you quickly what the um, HELANET indexes look for, and HELANET actually stands for the Halton Information Network. It's made up of the historical societies of Burlington, Esqueezing, Milton, um, as well as the Halton Peel branch of the Ontario Genealogical Society, now called Ontario Ancestors. And so you'll see from this screenshot that the birth, marriage, and death notices that used to be a part of this resource are now a separate search because they're part of the newspaper database. The same thing with Halton Images, it's just one level higher than Oakville Images. And if we have enough time, we can certainly go into that as well as the newspaper articles, which are a separate search too. Also, we'll take a look at the Oakville newspaper database in terms of doing research using it, um, as well as showing you how some of it is just index entries and how you can then go about contacting us to ask for copies of those items of interest. And finally, we'll also take a look at Oakville Images. As I said, um, it's a database that I've been involved with a large part of my time with Oakville Public Library, and I've been here now 22 years. Um, 
with a short stint away from local collections um, as the teen services librarian, but I was happy to return and, and be able to introduce some other resources within this um, that make it easier for people to do research on the area. So before we move over to our live demonstrations, I'm just going to say thank you now. And if you are looking for assistance in the future, certainly feel free to email me at elise.cole at oakville.ca, uh, especially if it pertains to any of the topics that we've talked about here, be it local or family history genealogy uh, based on this. So let me just flip over to our website. So as I mentioned, our catalog is one of the great tools that I think most people don't really take advantage of to the extent that they should. And remember earlier, I mentioned that for this kind of research, particularly if you're familiar with a particular resource that you want to take a look at, you really should um, take advantage of the advanced search option. And I'm going to show you why. So I happen to know that there is a cemetery in Oakville, um, Oakville Town Cemetery um, with St. Mary's section. It's actually up on Lions Parks Lane over by the GO station or just across from the GO station. Um, and, and sort of in between, I just forgot the name of the road, the Spears Road extension that, that, or cross, that turns into Cross Avenue um, and the QEW uh, 403. Um, it's this quiet little spot. It's a wonderful, I think, spot to visit because it's very peaceful. It's around where the, some of the community gardens are located. But as I mentioned, there is a cemetery there called St. Mary cemetery. And if I do a search for it this way, it will tell me that there isn't anything. But as soon as I go into advanced search and I do this keyword anywhere and nothing else in terms of any of the other filters, not format, not dates, not audience, which is just adult kid, children or teens, uh, collections, which is really more uh, focused on um, the different kinds of collections than anything else, though you can actually look for archival materials available for viewing by appointment only, uh, which is a new one to me. If you type in St. Mary Cemetery, It will actually bring up this result for Trafalgar Township Cemeteries, which is a publication by the Halton Peel branch of the Ontario Genealogical Society, now Ontario Ancestors. They changed their name only a couple of years ago. So, and you're going to say to me, Elise, why did it bring this up? So you see here it says details, and it's actually a branch of the Ontario Genealogical Society that uh, published this. But if you go into the full record, you'll see that this is a collection uh, or compilation of cemeteries. So there are 19, less than that, because they, they have a couple that are uh, standalone publications, but one through 19 with a couple of them missing because of their um, located elsewhere. But here is Oakville Town with St. Mary's Roman Catholic section which is cemetery number nine. So had you not done this advanced search, you wouldn't actually necessarily find it. The other thing is, is if you actually do uh, search for something like um, Toronto, and actually let's do something else. Let's do birth registrations. So you find a number of different things. You'll actually find the index books, which are the birth, marriage, and death registrations. These are actually part of the microfilm collection, which are in that cabinet that I mentioned in the Oakville room with all of the microform. Um, there are some 
uh, resources available to you online, which you can actually link to. So I'm just going to open that in a new tab. And it'll take you off to the Archives of Ontario website to explain more about the microfilm that it's referring to. And so this is actually a reel that's available within that microform cabinet that you could then put on to the ScanPro Family Search Affiliate Library computer with ScanPro machine and look at it there. I want to go back to the search and show you the first thing though, which are the birth registration cards that will lead you two places. One, it will tell you what the birth registration cards are. And if you take a look, it says to view the contents, please contact the library to arrange an appointment with, look, yours truly, the local collections librarian. And it's an archival materials available for viewing by appointment only. And it's in that locked lower cabinet on the right side of the map cabinet that I showed you earlier. However, unless you really want to see one of these cards in person, if I open up this in a new tab and take you over, it will actually take you to the scanned Oakville birth registration cards from 1915 and show you what these are. If we go into, because this is actually Oakville images, which we'll see in a moment. If we look at the notice and return of birth for Cam Clifford Cameron Black, and we can go into the full image just to see this a little bit bigger. This shows us the Physician's notice of birth and the official return of birth by the parent or guardian. So Clifford was born to his parents on June the 29th of 1915 in the municipality of Trafalgar. As I mentioned before, Trafalgar Township as a municipality existed in its own right up until amalgamation in 1962. We're in the county of Halton. And so it goes on to explain who the parents are, who the doctor was in attendance, Dr. Page, um, signature of the informant, which was, um, looks like mom. And so the date of return was on July the 21st, almost a full month afterwards. Um, and this is the information that was actually then sent off to the government of Ontario and that has now eventually become the birth registration index of um, births that you now have access to through Archives of Ontario, as well as some information through Family Search, as well as Ancestry Library Edition, uh, which uh, Family Search you have available to you anywhere you have internet access. And Ancestry Library Edition is available remotely from home. Um, through to the end of September of this year with it being reevaluated since it's normally available only through uh, public library walls, typically, but they recognize the fact that people are looking for this information. So that's just a quick example of the catalog. I wanted to show you one more thing though, because I mentioned the crisscross directories. But of course, there are ones that predate oops, the 1881, sorry, 1981 crisscross directories, which include these here from 1958 to 1975. And so we do have copies for consultation in the Oakville room in the locked cabinets, uh, which you can gain access to by simply speaking to any one of the staff members at the customer service desk, and they will help you with those. So you can see what's available by clicking on availability. Um, so we have some copies available for reference as well as some additional copies that we don't need as easily located downstairs in our storage area. If you do ever find stuff in our storage area that doesn't indicate that it's referenced, certainly feel free to place a, a hold on it um, and have it sent to your local branch. Um, it just means that we don't have enough room in our, in our library buildings for all of our materials, and so some of it's just moved off to storage. So you see that we have these, but if we go back to search, internet don't fail me now. And we actually filter by website or other online data. 
it will take you off to the directories from the late 1800s that actually are available only online that I cannot buy copies of for anything, love or money. So if we go into one of these records, it will describe to you what this is all about. You can go into the full record to get a more complete uh, list of contents. So Trafalgar Township starts on page 174. Oakville starts on page 275, um, as well as the other um, areas of the county overall. And if you click on the link, it will take you over to uh, Library and Archives Canada and show you the entire PDF. And if you've made note of those page numbers, then what you can do is actually go off to those records. So here is some of the indexes. And then we go into Nassaguaya Township and it will give you the information the address given after each name is the post office address, the freeholder versus tenant, and that kind of information, which is really quite helpful, um, especially when you get into uh, things like lot and concession, if you're doing family history research or you're looking up information about a particular property. So let's close that. I think that's it for the catalog. Let's go into the Halinet database. So if you're looking for the Halinet database, if you go here under interests and go into local history and genealogy, um, just a bit of a heads up, the library's website will actually be, um, a new website I should say, should, will actually be launching around the end of June. So a lot of the links won't look exactly the same and some of the arrangements um, and how things are gathered in terms of information will change as well. Um, but just to give you a sense of where things are located now, um, you can find local history and genealogy under interests and you can also find us under digital resources because of our connection to the, the databases. So let's go into the Halinet stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell it to search all, and I'm going to search for the last name or surname of Urquhart, just to show you what this looks like. And I'll click on search. And so it will give you the census records that refer to John Urquhart. And then you can go off from here and look at the census records um, on Library and Archives Canada's website, or you could go and find it in the microfilm if you're able to go into the library and a number of other resources. The ones I wanted to show you here are actually the Halt and Peel Cemetery records. So remember I mentioned Oakville Town, including St. Mary's Roman Catholic Cemetery? This is one of the reasons I was, I wanted to show you how to look for things with the advanced search because we own the actual book that uh, would include this particular cemetery listing or listings. In fact, we own all of the cemetery transcriptions from Halt and Peel Branch of Ontario Ancestors for the county of Halton. So that would include Nelson, Trafalgar, but we wouldn't have Albion or Caledon, which is Peel County. So if this was the kind of thing that you thought, oh, well, I'd like to see what those first names are and dates and, and whatnot, you could send me an email and say, Elise, I found this listing for Urquhart. Can you tell me what, uh, what Urquharts are actually buried at Oakville Town, including St. Mary's Cemetery? And those are ones I could make arrangements and have sent off to you if you're unable to go into the library yourself or if you're unable to go into the library because that section is closed because of the pandemic currently. In the case of other things that you see here, some of these directories and whatnot, if you go into more information, you'll find that these are actually resources that are held by uh, other libraries in our area. For example, uh, Georgetown branch of the Halton Hills Public Library is the one who has the surrogate court records on microfilm. Um, as well as these uh, pre-1900 
business directories that list John Urquhart, who is a chemist, druggist, and dealer in paints, oils, groceries, perfumery, and et cetera, um, as of 1851. So some really great resources to take a look into if this is your family. After this, as I mentioned, um, you notice that birth, marriage, and death notices have actually been spun off. As I mentioned, that's part of the newspaper database now where the notices were actually published by family members or sometimes covered as society notes, depending on what the event was, particularly marriages. Alton Images is um, the same thing as Oakville Images. It's just one level above us. Um, in fact, if you just add the word Oakville to this, it will take you off to Oakville Images. So let me just explain something quickly about Oakville Images and the Oakville Newspaper Database. So these are two search screens that essentially go in and find um, and emphasize different resources from one larger pool of information. So when you are looking at the Oakville newspapers, it will emphasize things like birth and marriage and death notices, as well as articles um, from that have been indexed, as well as full newspapers that have actually been digitized and are made available for you to take a look at. Um, so for example, cholera epidemics plagued young town, which was from the Daily Journal Record. One of those newspapers that I mentioned um, is now defunct and is a predecessor paper to the Oakville Beaver. So we have permission to actually scan it. If we click on the page, you can actually go in and take a look at the article. You can download the PDF in order to have it available as a file on your computer for research purposes. Um, or if you do need it, uh, we do offer a screen reader that will then actually, if it's open, will read out the content of the newspaper article to you. Let me just go back up. If you go into one of the results like this, where there isn't actually a newspaper to look at, what you can do is you can actually contact me through our Ask Us service and our email address is just up here under OPL reference at oakville.ca or if it's this kind of thing, please feel free to contact me directly and I can make arrangements for a copy of that to be emailed to you. The only time that I can't do that kind of workaround in the meanwhile is if you're looking for something that requires a bit more involved or intense research where we can't really narrow it down to a specific newspaper or day or month, that kind of thing, especially with something like the Daily Journal record that was publishing daily um, back in the 60s, um, having a sense that it happened sometime between January and June of that year requires too much digging. Um, so until um, services resume at their normal levels, uh, that's not the kind of thing that we can undertake, I'm afraid. So if we go back to the newspaper front page, if you go into the Oakville newspaper titles, you'll actually get a chance to see some of the content that's either indexed or digitized and made available in full format. So if we look at something like the Oakville Beaver, which really only truly came about in 1981, that's when the other newspaper that was being printed in competition uh, ceased to exist and they merged and they became one paper. There were actually some issues that have actually been donated to us. For example, this issue from August 1st, 1973, which we then actually scanned and made available uh, for use. But you'll see that for the most part, the newspaper titles or the newspaper copies that we've been able to scan and add um, really start in about 1993 through to 2020, 
The Oakville Beaver now shares with us their digital copies of the newspaper that they publish every Thursday. And so we go about adding those to the collection. Um, and in fact, during the lockdown, the first lockdown that happened starting in March of 2020, we weren't receiving copies of the physical newspaper at all. So we're glad that we're able to actually present these if people do need to go back to looking at the newspapers um, and needing to refer to something that was published in the print version. Let me just bring that over. Other than the newspapers, um, what we also have available are the Oakville images. And so, as I mentioned, this is actually a collaboration between the Oakville Public Library, the Oakville Historical Society, Oakville Museum at Eric Estate, State, the town, Appleby College, Brawny Historical Society, Trafalgar Township Historical Society, and private collectors. So if you need to go off to any of these particular organizations, they are all hyperlinked except for the private collectors. What I'm going to do, we've, we've done um, previous exhibits where we've actually done information or, or put together information or digital exhibits on anything from Eric and its inhabitants, which of course is where um, Oakville Museum is, is currently located, which is Eric Estate. Uh, Knox Presbyterian Church actually did one um, that they've left in our safekeeping. And so it just talks a little bit more about the church, Knox Presbyterian downtown, as opposed to Knox in the 16, um, as well as having the search feature. So what I thought I would do is I would show you a couple of ways to search and then um, show you how that then leads you to um, a way to then contact the organization that contributed that particular image. So for example, we see here anything that refers to Urquhart um, as a term, including some of the stuff that's being pulled from the newspaper index, because as I said, it's all pulling from one large database of uh, links and resources. So we see the newspaper index stuff coming over into Oakville Images. Um, but in some cases, um, this is images itself, not just newspapers. And you can actually narrow this down by particular contributors. So in this case, this image of Oakville Medical Hall, uh, which was established in 1835 and is um, located at 182 Lakeshore Road East, uh, formerly known as Colborne. Um, the front of the building, uh, the date of the original photo is 1897, we believe, but this is actually an image that was contributed by the Oakville Historical Society. This is how to contact them for more information. And they do have their own more current database of images as well, which you can get to by visiting this particular link. But if you wanted more information about this particular photo or you wanted to ask for permission to use it, uh, perhaps in a publication and you needed a better version because this one is not of a sufficient resolution to do it, um, then you could actually contact Oakville Historical Society and ask them those questions. If I do a much broader search for the term Oakville, you can see that it brings up a lot more results, 37,984. But what I wanted to show you is if you go down here to item types, you can certainly look at it by years, but sometimes when we're adding stuff to the collection here, we don't exactly know what year it is, um, but sometimes you're just looking for a particular kind of resource. And in this case, I thought I would show you the postcards. So that takes a lot of resources and actually narrows it down to 275 from a number of different contributing organizations, a number of them being from Oakville Public Library, in other cases, other organizations like Trafalgar Township Historical Society. And so if you go into the record, as I said, it will give you more information. 
they sometimes ask um, if you wouldn't mind helping them sort out some mysteries about it, which you can then do by uh, clicking on comments and providing what you think is the proper uh, date when the postcard was printed. You can create an electronic postcard and actually email this off to a friend and share it with them. So this is the radial bridge, the water tower, and of course, the public school, central school, which is located um, same areas where central branch is located now, uh, but was actually a bit more off to uh, Rebecca Randall Road and Navy Street, more where the Oakville Center for the Performing Arts is now located. So let's go back to the details. But if you wanted to get more information or contact Trafalgar Township Historical Society, this is actually their contact information in order to ask questions about this particular image. Um, and as I said, you can also place other comments on it, like saying this is facing east um, because this would be Rebecca Street as it now exists, but it's now, it was then the radial, the radial bridge. Um, which is, I think, just utterly fascinating to see what Oakville used to look like. Let's see. Oh, I thought I should mention, um, and I never thought about doing this when I was looking at the catalog. But let me go back very quickly to our catalog. And there are other newspapers that are not related to the Oakville Beaver. And I'm doing the wrong thing because, as I mentioned, you should be looking under advanced search to make sure that you find everything because it also searches the notes and contents and that kind of thing. This is not anything that is under the library's control. This is as a result of the two systems that we use. One, um, our integrated library system, which we use for cataloging, and then BiblioCommons, which is what is displaying the catalog here. But the reason I bring this up is because I'm actually looking for, let's do microform, microfilm. And I bet you I'm not gonna be able to find it off the top. Ah, Oakville Today. So Oakville Today is a newspaper that published in the late 80s into the early 1990s um, by an entirely different publisher. And this is different than the Oakville Beaver. Um, we don't have it indexed. Um, it was only delivered within North Oakville. Um, and it does have microfiche available in that microform cabinet I was showing you earlier in the images of the room itself. And then the other newspaper I wanted to show you is the Underground Press. Um, so this was actually an underground newspaper published in 1969. Um, it was published out of 119 Thomas Street at a cost of $2.50 for 12 issues. And it was affiliated with the Underground Press Syndicate. And I just think this one is fascinating. We bought them, I bought the microfilm many, many, many years ago, um, just because I thought it was really neat to know that there was this underground newspaper that was actually being printed in Oakville at one point in time. Of course, 1960s made perfect sense, um, but it certainly is uh, definitely a little different. So let me stop sharing. And let me just ask if there are any questions.